Hey there YouTube, my name is Craig. From along I-70 in Georgetown, Colorado, fall is in the air. You're watching TJV with Trucker Josh and Diesel. Enjoy! America's hometown truck stops. At least that's what their slogan says there. We're just uh, getting ready to go here. For those of you new, hey, welcome. Hit that subscribe button before you do anything else. Love to have you as part of our TJV crew here. First thing I have to tell you though is that I'm not your usual stereotypical trucker. I'm a little weird, I'm a little different. I am my own brand of trucker. I don't fit into the stereotype. And that's on purpose. <laughs> so welcome, you wanna see trucking from a different point of view? You came to the right place. Diesel, hey. Even my dog thinks I'm weird. That's Diesel back there, by the way. He's been with me on the road since he was about 10 weeks old. He just turned eight last week. They all just said happy belated birthday, Diesel. Right? They all said happy birthday, Diesel. Don't you feel special? Okay, so we're all ready to go. I've done my pre-trip, checked all the lights. Everything checks out. Sunglasses are on, hat is on, wearing clothes, wearing pants. I think we're ready to go. So we picked up this load in Jackson, Tennessee, right? And, uh, we're taking it up to Red Deer, Alberta in Canada. For those of you new, I am from Canada. I am based in Canada. I live just above Northwestern Minnesota. What is that noise? That's how we fix things around here. <laughs> it's funny, my, this morning I woke up and it was really hot in here. Uh, I had the truck running for a couple of hours, right? But it wasn't cooling down. Uh, it was so hot. Uh, my fan up here in the front wasn't working. So I, I came up to the dash, like, why aren't you working? And I just went to the passenger side over there and just randomly just like pounded on it, right? <laughs> Fixed it, just like that. Fix it, man, right here, tell you what. These things will fix anything, almost. <laughs> I should be careful with that when I say that. It doesn't fix everything, it doesn't fix everything. Okay, so let's, let's roll out of here a little bit. Oh, oh. There we go. Let's just make sure our trailer's not gonna fall off. I do a tug test every morning, even though I go underneath there and I check. Uh, the tug test serves more than one purpose. Uh, when you drive away, first of all, before you drive away, you do a pre-trip, you make sure that your trailer is locked on your fifth wheel, right? You walk underneath there and take a look. Uh, the tug test is just a second verification to make sure that it was locked, that nobody tampered with it, because I've heard stories of drivers that, uh, weren't spanked as children, I guess, going around pulling people's fifth wheel pins as a joke at night in the truck stop. Like sometimes you'll get people who steal your fuel, right? I sort of understand that, it's not right, you shouldn't do that, but sometimes people are trying to save money, right? And they're criminals, so they steal things to get themselves ahead. I can sort of understand that, though I don't do that. But why people would go around pulling random people's fifth wheel pins that I don't understand at all. What does that benefit him or her, whoever does it? It's never happened to me. I've never seen it happen in person, but I've heard many stories of it. Like I've been online here making videos for quite a while and I've heard stories from viewers who have told me about these things. People go around and they pull your pin at night or they'll pull it like halfway or something so that it looks like it's locked but you start driving down the road. That's dangerous. Like that trailer, if it's heavy enough, it'll stay on your fifth wheel and it could stay on until you get on the freeway and then all of a sudden slide off and kill somebody. I don't know who does these things, but I've heard of that it happens. All right, if you can imagine it, there's some idiot out there who actually has done it. So the tug test, just double check, peace of mind. 
makes you feel better. It's not going anywhere. And uh, also what it does is it tests your trailer brakes that they apply. And when you release them, that they release properly. So for you new people, what I do pretty much is I uh, will just go about my day and I sort of make a video blog, which we call a vlog, not a vlog. No, it's a vlog, like a video blog of my day. Things I see, thoughts in my head. Every once in a while I dish out a good rant. And I, I sort of try to make uh, this industry a little bit more of a happy place. I mean, not every video is gonna do that obviously, but one of my main goals is just to show the positives of trucking. I mean, yeah, there's some negatives that I focus on. Sometimes I rant about them. But I, I know that a lot of drivers on the road are so negative. They cannot stop being left. negative. Take the entrance to the left into 170 meters. Just everything that comes out of their mouth is either like an insult, slander, or uh, just like mean things to say about other people, nothing good to say. And there's too many of them out there like that, you know? And I, I don't want to be one of those. I want to be a, a positive person who, you know, people who aren't truckers can enjoy my videos then as well. You know? All right, Mr. Van, you got your signal on. I am assuming that was for a reason. You're turning? Okay, good. Sometimes people leave their signals on and they're not actually turning. So yeah, if you want to, Karen. Karen wants to be a part of the vlog too. Sorry, I forgot to introduce her. She's a little mad at me. This is Karen. She's my new GPS. Keeps me company on the road. Very bossy though. Not as bossy as Mandy, my last one. But are you gonna wait there, buddy? Hold on. Thank you. So I'm based out of Manitoba, Canada, which is like I said. Um, Manitoba is just above western Minnesota and eastern North Dakota and I live right over the border pretty much just barely into Canada from Minnesota and I haul freight all around from uh, both countries I'm an international driver so I take freight from Canada somebody buys something in the US from Canada I take it down for them and then somebody in Canada buys something from the US and I take it back up for them so uh, I go back and forth Road for Absolutely. So by now you'll have realized that I do all of my measurements in metric, which throws a lot of the Americans off. I apologize. I was just raised with metric. It makes more sense to me in my mind. So uh, we're just going to stick with that here. But if you're wondering, every mile is about 1.6 kilometers. So, you know, like. 30 miles, for instance, is 50 kilometers. 60 miles an hour is about 100 kilometers an hour. You can actually see that if you're in the US and you look down at your speedometer, the big numbers are probably miles an hour, right? On my speedometer, the big numbers are kilometers an hour. But if you look on the inside of your speedometer, if you have a, a analog one, I think it's called analog, right? There's different numbers kilometers an hour. Mine on the inside are miles an hour. So that's on the inside of mine. Or if you have a digital speedometer, well, you, you are able to switch it if you wanted to see the difference. It's going to be a good day though. A little overcast, but I have a feeling this is going to be a really good day. Glad you're here once again. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you go down below the video to my description, there's a whole ton of links down there to my social media and other ways we can hang out online. I-55 northbound here in Missouri, uh, heading towards St. Louis. So we're south of St. Louis here. Something's going on. You got the police blocking the freeway here and pushing us all onto a little detour. I have no idea where to go from here. I guess we'll just follow the crowd. Oh boy, oh boy. Is there another route around here? 
State Trooper. Oh boy. Traffic's about to get pretty crazy in this little town. So there is a detour we can take. Got to turn right here and then there's US Highway 63, which is a little east of here, which will take us north. According to Google, there was an accident up ahead at the next interchange. So if we can get down Highway 63 to the next interchange, we can get back on the freeway. But in the meantime, this town is about to get a slight influx of visitors. <laughs> what town is this that we're in here? Festus, Missouri. Hope you're ready for some traffic. Almost our turn to get off the off-ramp now. This is just a yield too. They don't even have stoplights here, which makes it a little more difficult because people want to pile in here. Well, now we got no traffic. They got lights over there. Okay, so I don't know why it was moving so slowly before. What are you doing, buddy? What are you? What are you? Oh, that's what's going on. There's cars coming from. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be busy. Good times, good times. Good thing I'm not in a hurry. Okay, I'm going in here. I'm going in here. Stick my nose in. Be aggressive, Chucker Josh. All right, the, the light's green up there, but people keep going through the red light. Why are they going through the red light? Wait, it, are all the lights green? Oh, now the lights are malfunctioning. They got cops directing traffic here yet. Oh, just to make things worse. Oh, they got all of this traffic coming off the interstate and then their lights fail. Oh no, that's what's taking so long here. Shoot, double whammy. I think I said US 63 before, right? It's actually US 61. Karen's trying to get me to turn right and then go back around onto the freeway, right where we came from. Uh, she doesn't know the road is blocked. I don't have her hooked up to my data right now. So uh, in this case, we're gonna ignore Karen. Hopefully she doesn't get too offended. And we're gonna turn left and take US Highway 61 up to the next main road, which takes us back to the interchange. Uh, just past where the accident happened according to Google. go. We're north of Kansas City now, still in Missouri. Oh, oh, didn't look at the exit number when I exited, but uh, we're at the Loves anyway. I'm gonna stop here for a half hour. 
Grab another coffee. In 200 meters, make a U-turn if possible. And uh, walk the weasel. In 100 meters, turn left on US 169 and then take the entrance to the right in 90 meters. I'm in a parking lot, Karen. I've noticed that Love's Travel Plazas have added uh, uh, like service bays like this. But a lot of their locations, they used to pretty much just be all about tires, right? That was their thing. They really liked tires. Now they do oil changes and stuff too. Hey. I'm going to be getting new drives on this truck uh, when I get home from this trip. I'm just going to be going with recaps. Uh, I don't like using recaps, but... You know, we just put a $20,000 roof on our house and we got to do our garage roof yet to match. Uh, probably next year. So, it is what it is. Recaps will do. Usually I would recommend uh, to put on virgin tires is what they call them. Alright, I'm just going to do a little loop here back in against these guys. 